Welcome to chapter 7 of the book of Zechariah. Chapter 7 begins and says, And it came to pass in the fourth year of Darius the king. Darius was a king of the Persians, also known as the Medes. We first uh, see or hear about Darius in Ezra, the book of Ezra 4.5. It says that he was the king of the Persians. Ezra 4.24, it mentions how uh, the work on the temple was halted until the second year of Darius. Cyrus the Great gave the edict to rebuild the temple, and the uh, men left Babylon and went back to uh, Jerusalem and started rebuilding uh, the temple. But the people of the land caused problems, didn't want that to happen, and they came and uh, petitioned against this rebuilding, and so it was stopped. And then uh, that was in the second year of Darius, and that's Ezra 4.24. Then a letter was sent uh, to Darius to stop work on uh, the temple uh, in Ezra 5, 5 to 7. So it actually, then he actually did stop it until uh, he made a search and mentions that in Ezra 6, 1, that he looked into the, uh, had the men look into the laws of the Medes and the Persians and Cyrus. He found out that it was um, given by Cyrus. So Darius issued a decree to resume the building of the temple, and that's in Ezra 6.12. And then when the rulers uh, that were in uh, the area of Jerusalem, who weren't Jews, received the decree, uh, they did as the decree uh, said. And this was during the uh, prophecy of Haggai and Zechariah. That was in Ezra 6.13, where the Zechariah is mentioned. The priests uh, were mentioned in Nehemiah 12.22 that were during the reign of Darius. Then it mentions in Daniel 5.31, which uh, goes uh, a little bit different as far as uh, the person of uh, Daniel. Uh, He was in the royal uh, presence, and he... uh, says that Darius took the kingdom at 62 years old, and that's Daniel 531. And then Darius placed uh, Daniel as a satrap in Daniel 6.1, after Daniel's um, explaining the the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and so forth. And then uh, the Darius then issued a decree uh, for 30 days to not worship any other god except him. Uh, was set up by the rulers to trap the Jews. And this was in Daniel 6, 9. And then Darius um, found out that the um, Daniel was in the lion's den, but he was not devoured. And so afterwards he issued a decree to tremble at the God of Israel, at the mention of the God of Israel. And that's Daniel six twenty five. And then it mentions that Daniel prospered under the uh, rule of Darius uh, in uh, 628 and later into uh, the uh, following ruler. And it mentions that Darius, the son of Ahasuerus in uh, Daniel 9, 1. Now, I'm not sure there might have been other Dariuses, but this Darius was basically the uh, most of the things happened between his second and third and fourth year with uh, Haggai and Zechariah. And then uh, it mentions in Haggai 1.1, 1, 1, the word of the Lord uh, to Haggai was uh, given to him in the second year of Darius, two years before we we're at here in chapter 7. And then uh, the Lord awakened the spirit of Zerubbabel and uh, Yeshua in the second year of Darius, Haggai 1.15. And the word of the Lord uh, came to Haggai in the second year of Darius, Haggai 2.10. Then the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the second year of Darius, in Zechariah 1.1. And then we have, uh, in Zechariah 1.7, we have uh, mentions the Darius and the vision of the horses happened during the time of Darius. So this is the Darius, and it came to pass in the fourth year. So it's two years later. And the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the fourth of the ninth 
month, which is Chislu. Now, this is the last we hear of Darius. And Sherazar, or Sar- Sarasar in the Greek, sent to Bethel and Rogom, the king, and his men to atone to the Lord. Well, now these people, this Sherazar uh, is only, uh, there's one mentioned who was the son of Shennacherib, and he killed Shennacherib, his father, and left. So probably wasn't that one. But then in Jeremiah 39, 3, we hear of a, a Sherazar being a governor of the king of Babylon, who was probably the same as this. And it was a, they were Babel, it was a Babylonian name. So they're not Jews. And then Rugam, uh, this is on the, well, on the confusing side because the different uh, Greek um, texts have different names. The Aldine has the name of Arbath Sagir. And then the, and that was in 1517 uh, Aldine. The Complutensian Polyglot, 1516, has Rogom here. And then uh, the Alexandrina 16 edition has uh, Arbasir, uh, and the Brenton and uh, the Alexandrina. So, but it, that's all the place it mentions. It doesn't say anything else anyplace else. So apparently it says he was a king of that area, and there was not a Jew, and his men sent to atone uh, the Lord. Now, they may have been sending to um, cause the Jews to stop and cause problems for them, we, um, it doesn't say that, but we know that they did want to stop the rebuilding because it mentions, I mentioned that earlier during uh, Darius, and so now they're rebuilding again. So maybe they were, for what reason it says to atone, the Lord could be because a lot of these people became what they call the Samaritans, and they lived up in Samaria uh, in the middle of what today is Israel. And the Samaritans um, were people that came from other areas that uh, Nebuchadnezzar and different rulers from the uh, Mesopotamian area um, replanted back in, replanted them from their normal place into uh, Palestine or Israel. So uh, anyway, they uh, sent to atone the Lord, saying to the priests, in the house of the Lord Almighty, Pantocrators, and to the prophets, saying, uh, The sanctified offering has entered here in the fifth month, as it did already a fit number of years. Well, now, exactly what, it, what that means, it, well, it says, it says that this is what they're bringing up, something to do with the sacrifice, sanctified offering has been happening. And then it says, and came to pass the word of the uh, word of the Lord of the forces, the dynamion, um, dynamite comes from that word, the Greek word, to me saying. So now these pe- people, these have come, non-believers mainly, or well, they weren't non-believers. I maybe they believed that there was the God of Israel. Maybe they did more so than the Jews, but anyway, they came and w- what the purpose was in the sanctified offering. I really not sure, but. And then, anyway, uh, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, and he says, Speak to all the people of uh, the land. And here, now, what does he mean to all the people of the land? Does he mean just the Jews, or does he mean all the people that were not Jews? Um, uh, It says all the people, so I'm guessing it could be everybody. And to the priest, saying, uh, now the Lord is saying, If you should fast or beat your chest, in the fifth or in the seventh months. And behold, for 70 years by fasting, have you fasted to me? So have they done anything right? Basically what God is saying. Uh, the 70 years, did you do anything you're supposed to do during the, even during that 70 years that I uh, sent you? This is the way I see him saying this. And he says, and God, if you should eat or should drink, do you not eat and drink to yourselves? Well, Paul had that same... Um, uh, fault with the early Christian churches in 1 Corinthians 11, around chapter 20, and he's they're eating and uh, drinking uh, to themselves and not waiting, and it was it became something for themselves. It had nothing to do with God. Uh, they left out the uh, purpose of God. And I look at Israel today, and uh, it's a yeah, it's a nation again. And Jerusalem is now the capital of this nation, but they still haven't built a temple. And uh, 
I don't see it. I see a lot of ungodly. I see more ungodliness in Israel than I do uh, godliness. And they're definitely not friendly towards uh, Christians. So um, that's to me is or it's even worse today than it was at this time here when they came back from the 70 years that they were in Babylon. And it continues, uh, Are not these my words, which the Lord spoke by the hands of the prophets before, when Jerusalem was inhabited and prospering, and her cities round about, and the mountainous area and the plain were inhabited? So he begged God, saying, Well, did, didn't I speak through the prophets and say all these things, uh, tell you all these things while everything was going uh, really well? Yes, he did. But came to pass the word of the Lord to uh, Zechariah, saying, Thus says the Lord Almighty, saying, A just judgment you shall judge. So you have to be, your judges have to be just and do righteous. And let each execute mercy and compassion. And this is the same thing that Jesus was bringing out to the people, judging justly and mercy and compassion towards your brother. And tyrannize not the widow and the orphan and the foreigner, also what Jesus uh, wanted. And uh, let not each resent his brother for hurt in your hearts. So again, uh, this is what Jesus taught. And they resisted to take heed. Now, who is the they? Is that the people at the present or is it the people that were in the past? Uh, I believe as he's talking about the people at that present time, that Zechariah, they're, they're resisting to take heed and gave their backside ranting and pressed their ears to not listen. They didn't want to hear any of this. Just as when Jesus came, they didn't want to hear what Jesus had to say. They did the same thing, ranted against him and pressed their ears not to hear and uh, went on and on and killed John the Baptist. And so uh, here God is bringing him back. But now Zechariah, what is he doing? He's showing that, uh, well, things haven't really changed. And it says, and their heart was ordered for resisting persuasion to not listen to my law and the words which the Lord Almighty sent out by his spirit, by the hands of the prophets before. So they uh, didn't listen to the prophets, the people at the time of Zechariah, I believe. They didn't listen to the prophets before, and they're not listening to them uh, now. And there was great anger by the Lord Almighty. And it will be in which manner I spoke, and they listened not to him, so they shall cry out. Now, the hymn is, who is the hymn? Of the, the prophet, uh, the spirit, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, the hymn, uh, the Lord, could be saying, and in which manner I spoke the Lord, and they listened not to him, the Lord, saying it in a, like it would be, uh, I'm Charles, and you did not listen to him, now, instead of saying me. So they shall cry out, and in no way shall I listen, says the Lord Almighty. So that's in the present. So uh, they shall cry out, and in no way shall I listen. Of course, this was the beginning of the rebuilding of the temple and eventually ended up into Herod's temple. Jesus came. He was crucified. or He, uh, he preached the good news for three or four years. He was crucified, raised from the dead. In 70 AD, the temple was destroyed, and for 2,000 years, the people were spread out throughout all the nations. And I believe this is what uh, Zechariah here is prophesying, uh, and it's going to happen. He says, and God says, and I will cast them into all the nations, which they knew not. So it's going to be worse uh, than it was um, for the 70 years that they were in Babylon, the 70 years of Jeremiah. It's going to be worse. Now, there again, another good reason that they would want to kill Zechariah. They don't want to hear this. They killed all the prophets, so why wouldn't they kill Zechariah? So the land is for extinction. Well, uh, that is, uh, it says here, uh, and I will cast them into all the nations which they knew not, and the land shall be obliterated after them from traveling through 
and from returning. You can't even, they won't even be able to go through or return. And that's what it was like for 2,000 years to the Jews. They basically, on the whole, never came, went there or could go there. Nobody there wanted them. So they, uh, but finally, uh, 1948, they were made a country in one day by the United uh, Nations. And then all the nations around attacked. They defeated them. And then years later, they were attacked again, and they ended up taking uh, Jerusalem. And so he, but God says, yes, they ordered up the choice land for extinction. So now we're back into the 2017 and um, getting close to the great eclipse, the 21st. And this is the uh, 4th of August. The great eclipse is on the 21st of August. And the um, condition in Israel, like I said, is uh, pretty pretty sad. N nothing even close to being as good as it was at the time here of Zechariah. At least the people in the time of Zechariah were rebuilding the temple. But now nobody wants to rebuild the temple. There's certain talk about it. Yes, there are some Jews that do want to, uh, righteous Jews that do want to rebuild the temple. But yet it hasn't happened for quite a few years. And uh, I think it eventually it will be, but then it'll be during the period of the time of the beast. That's the way I see uh, the, I'm not coming up on this my own. I have the proofs and it's in the book of Revelation. If you went to the video seminars, you would see, you would see them. So these things must have angered the Jews, and so for therefore um, Zechariah was not welcomed to what he had to say. But Zechariah next goes into this, as you see, a future restoration of Israel. God is always restoring Israel one way or the other, and so here we'll go into this and see what it's talking about in chapter 8, and I hope you'll join us, and God bless.